that's a great summation on the content side, but I wonder, Warren, if you could help us out with the fundraising side, because if there's one thing the Obama campaign has showed everybody in this election cycle down in the United States, it's that they are just the masters of raising tons of dough, money we can't even imagine, through the Internet. Is that kind of fundraising, admittedly not in those numbers, is that possible up here? It's possible. It's not happening because our campaigns are not as expensive. And we have a smaller population. We have much tighter election spending. So the Dean campaign actually were the pioneers about how to use the Internet to totally transform fundraising. What they're doing, because the beauty of Internet fundraising is it's different than the way things used to be. Really what things used to be was like Jerry's telethon were pledges. And then you'd have to hire a bunch of people to chase that money. The beauty of internet money for fundraisers is that money is instantaneous. You know, you get a credit card number and that money goes right into your bank account and you can buy ads with it or what have you. And it, it's different kind of money than anybody's ever experienced before. Katie, how about from your vantage point in Ottawa? What kind of money is going to be able to come in on the internet through the techniques employed by the campaigns this time around? Well, I have to actually agree with, with Warren on this. It's not as much of a factor when you come to the campaign period because not only do we have restrictions on how much someone can donate, but there are fairly stringent restrictions on how much you can actually spend if you're a party. So uh, it's kind of, a, it's, it, it seems counterintuitive, but it's during the campaign that parties have the least need for donations because they're all going to spend the limit anyway. Um, I think what they're, the parties here are more concerned about is actually getting word out, getting you know warm bodies to events, getting people to to plant signs, getting people to, uh, to to get excited and show up and provide a nice looking crowd at a rally. I actually think that the Canadian campaigns and the Canadian websites and sort of the parties' initiative do seem to be focused far more on building support, not necessarily building donations. Not that they'd say no if someone wanted to, mm. but it's really not, at, at the moment, it's just not as essential as it could be. And of course, we do have a lot of public funding of uh, election yeah. campaigns too, right? Parties get a certain, what is it, $1.75 per vote or something they like do. that? So they do. So actually, get? every voter that you convince to, uh, to, to throw a vote your way, even if you don't win, if you get over 10%, that that counts as a, as as a you know part of the public money you're going to get. So yeah, it's almost more efficient here to uh, to really concentrate more on building support than raising money, and then the money will sort of come as an indirect result of that. You know, Andrew's got to be scratching his head right now, saying these quaint Canadians, what the <laughs> hell are they doing? How can they possibly run a campaign this way? But well, well, give us a sense of the dollar figures down there, Andrew, and and how well, the internet has helped exploit it. So. So I think it's important that we understand what online fundraising really means because people are finding that the internet is just a convenient way to deliver the money. They, sometimes that money actually is for an event where they're actually going to see the candidate and it's just easier for them to go online and make the donation than to bring a check and stop at a table at the front of the hotel lobby uh, or wherever the reception is being held. But I think the more important point which might tie some of this all together is that uh, money online for political campaigns is really a byproduct of community and the candidate that actually builds that community in a robust way and allows the participants uh, in his campaign to connect with each other to to communicate with each other um, is the is the beneficiary of, of of shared energy and shared enthusiasm Ron Paul for example in our last uh, in the primary cycle this time on the Republican side raised a huge amount of money um, because he actually opened up his books in a way and actually showed the money coming in to his supporters so they actually could see their friends donating while they were doing it. Hmm. Um, but all this, you know, as it may impact the Canadian election, has to do with the same holy grail that we have here, which is how to turn online enthusiasm and support into offline action. Actually people knocking on doors, putting up signs, going to the polls and voting. And that's still, we still don't know whether or not all this activity in the 2008 election in the U.S is going to uh, convert itself. We have some good indicators. Barack Obama has one of the largest databases ever assembled uh, in political history, um, which they are going to deploy on getting out the vote. So um, I think it's a combination of having a strong yeah. online, uh, a strong online uh, strategy in order to get your supporters yeah. to take action. Go ahead, Katie. Did you, sorry, did you want to add something to that, Katie? No, well, I just want to say that actually I do, I, I agree that we're, that's why they, I think this is going to be an interesting election up here because they are, we're seeing the use of, of things like Facebook and things like, you know, Meetup and various mailing lists to actually get people out. So maybe we'll have some ideas to whether or not that's, that's working as far as during the campaign when it comes to get out the vote. Yeah, it's a, it's a giant mystery box. Let's play a little example here of some content that we saw in a previous election campaign, what the purpose of it was and what consequences or action it may have delivered. And I'm going to uh, go into the vault of Mr. Kinsella here, something he did 
aimed at Mr. Taylor's party in the last Ontario election, which was October 07. This was called Tory Tube and was a product of the Liberal War Room. Roll tape, please, Michael. Thursday, well, there's this big horse following me and telling everyone I'm going to privatize health care, which I am. <laughs> but what do I have to go and tell people for? And then I had to go to a debate and I totally choked. It was tragic. Anyhow, one thing that went really well for me was me and Howie getting together. Oh, we were on the same side and everything, and people were calling us Hojo, and it's so awesome. Oh, my God. Friday. Oh, my God. So far, my day seriously sucks big time. First, I woke up and remembered what happened last night. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hojo? So I go to read the morning news, and whammo, this guy named Lori, he writes for The Sun, and obviously he's supposed to be my friend. But then, in big letters, he totally said, Dalton won last night. Like, how is that possible? I wish I could just call him up and be like, Lori, this is not cool. We're supposed to be BFF? Okay, Andrew, since you couldn't see that, you can only hear that. That was from the Liberal Party of Ontario's War Room, aimed at the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario's War Room. And... The Liberals won the last election, second consecutive majority, first time the Liberals had done that in 70 years and all because of that clip. Uh, Warren, seriously, <laughs> what, um, who's that aimed at? Uh, well, it just makes me feel good to see that again. Yes, it was I'm like sure. a year ago. Um, it was um, one of the criticisms that's made when we were doing those things is we'd have uh, media people coming up to us, um, not you, but many others, and saying, oh, you guys are just narrow casting. You're not, this stuff is not being seen uh, by the public, by is voters. Is true? Well, it is true because there's such a multiple, it's not like TV, right? This is one channel and there's a finite number of channels on the internet. There's millions upon millions of channels, so your stuff can get lost. And our point was, well, we're aiming at our, at our partisans to make them feel good and get a message out to them. Uh, but also to the media. And the media will say it's not affecting our coverage and so on. But as you saw at the end of that clip, we referenced how Lori uh, at the Sun said that we won the debate. Mm -hmm. uh, Dalton McGinty won the debate. As soon as we did that clip, they pulled that uh, column off of the Sun news uh, site, website. Mm -hmm. So it suggested to us they were, in fact, paying attention to what we were doing and what was having an impact. It's just media people will never concede that bloggers like Stephen and I are, are having an impact, but my, my hunch is that they are. Well, let's see if your adversary agrees. Do you think that kind of thing or what you were doing was having an impact? Well, there was a study at Queen's University during or just after the last election and it said that 3% of people solely got their information from blogs for, their ele for the election information. So the researcher concluded that blogs didn't have a significant effect on the campaign. But the fact of the matter is, about 95% of journalists who are worth their weight, or worth their salt, rather, um, read blogs many times a day. It was the front line of news. In fact, the Conservatives won 30 out of 36 news cycles during the last election, and a lot of that first raw news coverage came through the blogs. So the blogs were leading the mainstream media. 